Welcome everyone, thanks for joining the May Ethereum.org community call. Um, quick summary of our agenda that we've got. Um, we do have two community members who have never been on the call before, so this is my warning to them that I'm going to be calling on them in a minute or so just to say hi. Um, so Jakob is going to run through the work he's been doing on his feedback widget. We've got Joseph, who's going to be speaking about migrating the Ethereum wiki content onto Ethereum.org. Uh, we have Anvetica from East Staker here to chat about quadratic funding and the round that they'll be running. Uh, Luca will be chatting about some of the developments we've had in translations. And Sam's going to talk a little bit about our Q2 roadmap, as well as some other announcements and call-outs we'd like to make. Um, before that, we have both Nico and Joseph, who haven't been formally introduced on this call. Um, so it'd be nice for you both just to say a quick hello. Uh, Nico, do you want to start? I think Nico's having internet issues. I don't see his name in the list. Ah, uh, no luck there. Okay. Um, Joseph, I think I've seen him about. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Um, hi, uh, so I'm Joseph, and uh, I've been kind of hanging around the Ethereum world since about 2018. Uh, my background is in environmental science, and um, sometime last year, I kind of decided that I would be happier making Ethereum my full-time <laughs> full occupation, and, and now here I am. So um, thanks for having me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Joseph. And... I still don't see Nico. We'll get him one of these days um, on this call. So I'll um, stop sharing my screen for now. So first up, we've got Jakob, who's going to be sharing the work he's been doing on the feedback widget. Um, Jakob, I'll pass it to you. Hello, everybody. My name is Jakob. I'm a product designer on Ethereum.org. Um, I actually cannot. I uh, <laughs> share my screen. Could you give me permission? Sure, I'm doing it just now. Uh, you may have to leave and rejoin after I do that, but let's just quickly get that set up. Okay. Um, oh, I can share. Perfect. So, um, Ethereum.org is obviously a very big website with a large audience. And uh, this is the reason why we wanted to make sure that uh, we capture ideas of everybody to sort of see whether the website actually helps. And I'm trying to click on share. It doesn't really <laughs> work. Okay. Um, let me quickly rejoin if that helps then. Apologies, everybody. All right. Sorry about that. It looks like I've maybe made a little bit of a mess on the setting, setting this up. So apologies in advance. Nope, still doesn't work. Oh, good. I see Nico showed up. Nico, are you there? Do you want to say hi? And uh, Jakob, maybe in the meantime, try uh, try giving that a reset. Yeah. Hello. Can you can you hear me? Can hear you. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. I think this is the first time I can talk. In, in the community call because last time I was having issues with the audio. So I will introduce myself quickly. Uh, I'm Nicolas. I am a web developer from Argentina. And I have joined the team in December. So I am still very new in the team. Uh, nice to meet you. Thanks, Nico. Um, Jakob, any luck on your end? Still not. <laughs> Sorry, Alex, about that. 
Um, alternatively, I can speak if you can share. Uh, does does sharing work for you, Joshua? I can send the link. Um, if you give me a minute, I'm going to dig around with the permissions. Um, maybe someone else in the team could see if it's working for them quickly. Seems to be working for me. Okay. Um, in that case, um, you can uh, you can just share this link that I will be posting in the chat right now. This one. I'm sharing right now for you, Jakob. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Karen. So, uh, apologies for that, everybody. So, um, as I was saying, Ethereum.org is a page that gets a lot of traction, and so that we have certain responsibility to make sure that uh, the content and design we put out there is actually helping most people achieve their goals. And uh, we are always open to hearing any sort of feedback here on Discord or in GitHub or sometimes even through mail. But the problem with that is that uh, it requires a lot of motivation to <laughs> actually uh, go to Discord and uh, give us feedback and so most of the people end up not telling us if uh, the content we are presenting on the website actually gives them the relevant information they need in a manner that would suit them this quarter we decided to uh, make sure that we can also ask these people directly on the website whether uh, basically the website is helpful or not and uh, the way we decided to do that is basically to introduce a small feedback widget which will be visible on every single page of ethereum.org and Corwin just showing you how it looks so it's like a little bubble at the bottom right corner and uh, with this, you can basically tell us on each specific page whether uh, that page was helping you understand some topics or getting some relevant information or not. And we will monitor this to see if, you know, we are actually, what we're putting out there makes sense to broader audience or whether we need to revisit the content or design and make some changes so that it's actually helpful. So I welcome everybody to please give us that feedback because it's really important, not only for each individual person, but for the broader audience too, so that we make sure that people are getting from the websites as much as possible. And there is actually a second step to it. You can see right now that uh, you can give us a quick, quick feedback whether the page with, uh, is helpful or not. But then also you can click on uh, give open short survey, which will give us some additional insights into why, for example, the page wasn't helpful. Because uh, knowing if the page is helpful or not is obviously the first step to understand if we are uh, giving users what they want. But then if we see that there is a room for improvement, we also need to know like, what can we do better. So this would be very important for us to get as much as possible of this survey feedback also, so that we can uh, make exactly those changes that uh, you would like to see in the website. I hope that this will be much easier 
uh, and straightforward, more straightforward than like giving a GitHub issue or commenting here on Discord. So this was our idea. And we also have actually a Figma prototype for this issue where we are uh, discussing how the feedback widget should look because obviously our goal is to collect a lot of feedback to make sure that it's uh, statistically significant and make sense. But we also recognize that um, it could be, for example, on mobile phone a little bit intrusive if it's always visible, etc. So there is a balance between um, giving the option of giving feedback and for us to work with that and also making sure that this doesn't hinder the user experience of reading and browsing our website. So there is also a uh, specific channel dedicated to this uh, small feature on Discord. It's called uh, user feedback. It's under the epics section. So you can also provide comments as you will test this uh, there. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this should be almost done as you can already see it on our test environment. So hopefully this will be released in two days from now, maybe a week. Thank you very much. Back to you, Joshua. Thank you very much, Jacob. Really exciting stuff. Um, yeah, and hopefully leaving feedback is a little bit easier than sharing screens in Discord. And again, apologies to everyone for the slight delay in getting started. Uh, next up, we've got Joseph chatting through his work on the Ethereum Wiki migration. Okay, uh, thank you, Josh. So I've been, yeah, so I've, I've been working on the wiki migration, uh, which is actually the, the wiki and the ethdocs migration. Now, these are, are two websites that currently exist as kind of informational resources about Ethereum, but both um, quite significantly out of date. Uh, ethdocs is, is dated all the way back to the Homestead release, which was when um, Ethereum mainnet first launched. And the wiki uh, hasn't really been updated since sometime in 2020. So a lot of the information there, although it's still attracting a lot of a lot of views, is actually kind of out of date and no longer relevant. And some of it's even maybe a little bit contradictory to, to the current truth. Um, so the idea is that we will have one kind of trusted source of, of, of information and that'll be ethereum.org and those other websites will be, um, will be deprecated. But there's also a lot of really, really nice and useful information on those sites that we don't want to just, just kind of lose to, to, to obscurity. Uh, so the idea was to, to go through and audit both of those websites page by page and find the information that was useful or interesting uh, or in some other way valuable, migrate it over to ethereum.org and then deprecate the other, the other sites. And, um, you know, it's been, it's, it's, it's been super interesting um, and kind of challenging, definitely because working out what information was actually out of date um, wasn't always obvious and required quite a lot of searching through kind of, you know, the source code for different clients and bugging people on discords and all of that kind of thing to work out what the actual current status of some of these really esoteric um, bits of information actually is. Um, also finding places on ethereum.org where some of this information uh, would live appropriately was also kind of challenging. Uh, the wiki in particular is, is is just kind of a really strange mix of, of basic kind of fundamental uh, introductory information, but then also some really kind of hardcore nuanced instructions for, you know, like spinning up local private networks or philosophy pages about Byzantine fault tolerance and all this kind of stuff. And um, Ethereum.org has kind of got a more overall kind of approachable structure and, and, and vibe. So sometimes it's a little bit, a little bit difficult to find good homes for the information. And um, you know, the thing about the wiki, especially is that in its own way, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's kind of, kind of beautiful. Like certainly it's definitely uh, a snapshot of a really lively moment 
in in Ethereum's history. And it, it became just a bit of a quest to try and preserve that vibe and the fun and also the uh, the, the rich information that's that's in the wiki and not let it just get lost to obscurity just because the site's become deprecated. So um, yeah, so it's been a bit of a it's been a bit of a quest. And I guess in practice, what that actually looked like was firstly a, a page by page audit of both those sites, the wiki and, and ethdocs, and then a series of relatively chunky pull requests to ethereum.org. Um, just trying to remember what they were, but reworking the proof of stake pages and the proof of work pages, adding some more, um, some new sections on proof of work mining algorithms, adding new pages about data structures and encoding schemes that are used across the Ethereum protocol, uh, reworking the history pages, adding uh, pages and sub pages about the networking layer. Um, you know, adding entries to the glossary, reworking the JSON RPC API pages, and a bunch of other just kind of more minor additions to lots of lots of other pages across Ethereum.org, using the information from from the wiki and, and ethdocs. And the status of that project now is that the migration is basically finished. There's a couple of PRs awaiting review, but you know, in the next week or so, I'm hoping to have ethdocs and and the wiki. Um, sunsetted with redirects back to ethereum.org and those pull requests merged and then kind of draw a line under it. So uh, if, if you're interested, then reach out or have a look at the PRs. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Joseph. Good work. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Really appreciate the work you put into this. Um, for context is something that's been hanging around as a task to be done for like two years at this point so yeah it's really great to see it finally get over the finish line um i think we've got invetica here yes great um so invetica is going to talk a little bit about the east acre clr round which is something we're all really really excited about uh invetica i'll give you the floor hey thanks good morning Can everyone hear me okay yeah, loud and clear. Right. Perfect. Uh, yep, I'm Vedika. I'm one of the uh, core members here over at the East Acre community. Uh, just a real quick plug uh, for East Acre. If those of you uh, on this call that aren't already familiar, um, we are a group of community members that support and advocate for the solo staking uh, or staking in general and supporting that um, uh, within the Ethereum ecosystem. So whether you're a home solo staker, um, whether you're soliciting a staking service or staking pool, uh, we like to make sure that your journey, uh, no matter what path you take, uh, is as seamless and as stress-free uh, stress as possible. Uh, so if you're looking to stake on the Ethereum network, if you have questions on staking services, uh, the eStaker community is a great community to join to get some answers to those questions. Uh, our, our motto, in fact, is uh, welcoming first and knowledgeable second. Um, so you'll find a, a very um, uh, welcoming environment and um, uh, no question is too small for us. So what I'd like to bring to your attention today specifically is uh, we have uh, the East Staker community teamed up in conjunction with uh, CLR Fund and the Ethereum uh, Foundation um, in sponsoring a 350,000 die uh, quadratic funding matching round uh, via the CLR fund. And what that means specifically, and all the applicable details, I'll put it in the chat here, um, and anyone that's interested can check that out. Uh, you can go over to qf.eathstaker.cc. And what's going to happen here is if you are a um, in any way supporting the staking ecosystem within Ethereum, you are eligible to be compensated via a grant. And what that means, it could be anywhere from documentation, uh, tutorials, if you have step-by-step -step, um, instructions on how to set something up as it relates to staking. Uh, if you are a community that's looking to support the staking uh, ecosystem, if you are a developer or engineer that has a tool, whether that be a dashboard or some sort of GUI interface or any tool that 
somehow saves us clicks. Uh, if setting up and spinning up a validator is a 10 click process and your tool gets us down to eight clicks, that's what we want. We want um, any step to make it easier and ultimately lowering the technical barrier in which to get into the staking ecosystem is what we're looking for. So and any of those uh, spanning that, that broad spectrum, um, as long as it relates to staking, is eligible for the grant. And you'll need two things. Uh, so you've got 12 days yet to um, submit your project idea. It does not have to be uh, functioning at the moment. The idea here is to give your project exposure and ultimately get yourself funded in order to get yourself the applicable resources in order to build this thing. So you've got 12 days to enter. Again, this is on qf.estaker.cc. And you're gonna need two things. And this is uh, for both if you are planning on submitting a project idea or if you're looking to contribute to a project um, that you're interested in. And those two things are, you're gonna need to be Bright ID verified. The link to that is also on qf.estaker.cc. And then you're also gonna need funds on Arbitrum. So this is all happening on a layer two. So the, the fees are gonna be, you know, basically next to nothing. Um, and what you'll do is once you've become Bright ID verified, um, that is how um, CLR fund mitigates uh, or, or helps with civil resistance. And then uh, the, the funds that you add to Arbitrum are gonna be the funds that you would use to contribute to any of the available grants that are submitted. And just a, a real quick TLDR on, on what, how, how this works in terms of the quadratic funding aspect of it is um, it's, it's a way to sort of level the playing field for smaller players in order to contribute to a project and also signal to an ecosystem that it's something that's important or of value, um, that it's not just one person. What that means specifically is if we look at uh, three arbitrary grants, uh, three separate projects, and one project um, maybe has ten thousand uh, dollars die in funding, but it was only by one person. It was by a whale. It was. It's a project they're excited about. They want to see it uh, funded, so they they put in ten grand. But then you've got uh, maybe another grant that a hundred people donated to, but they only donated uh, one die, so they they've only got a hundred die. Um, the way quadratic funding works is it's the amount of votes. So a single die you can imagine equates to a vote. And the more votes or signals that an individual grant has, the more proportion in funding that specific grant gets. So in this instance, looking between the, the grant that has $10,000 in funding with a single uh, contributor and the grant that has 100 die in funding over 100 different people, that second grant would actually get more in percentage of the matching pool than that initial one. So uh, all that being said, uh, you don't need to be contributing a ton of money in order to make a very large impact um, onto these, these grants. Um, and again, that's 350,000 die that the uh, Ethereum Foundation has Put up for us um, in, in support for this quadratic funding round. Uh, it's a really big deal. Again, 12 days left to enter and submit projects. All of the applicable details, again, whether you are a project looking to get funding or a contributor looking to support projects can be found at qf.ethstaker.cc. And if you have any questions uh, in any part of the process, if something is confusing, if you're having trouble getting verified or, or bridging over funds, um, please reach out to us over at the eStaker Discord. Uh, we're more than happy to help you out and uh, support your journey on this, uh, this QF round. That's all for me. I appreciate the time and uh, sharing some of the stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on and for sharing. Um, so yeah, everyone, definitely join the East Baker community and definitely try and get involved in the CLR round. Um, so next up, we've got some PoApps. Um, you'll need a phone or a QR scanner for this. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so here is the 
QR code for you to scan. Um, I'll leave this up for like a minute or two. I also am going to share the direct link for this for people in the community call chat because I know that sometimes the video quality on the, this isn't great, so people can struggle a little bit. Maybe if I just zoom in a tiny bit. No, I can't. Never mind. Yeah, and I've also just shared the link in the community call chat too. So as I said, I'll just give it a minute um, and then we can move on to our next part. Okay, I think that's been long enough and we can probably move on. Again, I've posted the link in the chat so you can claim your pull up. Um, next up, we've got Luca who will chat a little bit about the translations initiatives that we're running just now. Sure. Hey, everyone. Um, just a couple of quick mentions regarding the translation program today. Um, first of all, we wanted to highlight the translator certificate again. Um, we have received a good number of claims for the certificate so far, but also some messages indicating that not everyone is aware that this exists. So again, we have introduced the Ethereum.org translator certificate at the start of this year as a way of acknowledging our community of translators and supporting them in their career development or entry into the Web3 space, if something that is something they are interested in. Since the certificate can be used as a reference, there are some requirements to being eligible to receive it, um, specifically having at least 5,000 approved words in the Ethereum.org project in Crowdin as we want to make sure we are issuing this to active translators who are suggesting high quality translations. But if you have been contributing to ethereum.org as a translator and aren't sure how to check if you are eligible, uh, feel free to reach out in the translate channel on our Discord. Uh, send us an email at translations at ethereum.org or send me a DM and we will check your eligibility and potentially send you the certificate. Um, just wanted to raise this and mention it again in case we have newer people joining um, or someone who missed this in the past. Um, thanks to Scott one up for designing this awesome certificate, if I do say so myself. And obviously, thanks to all of our translators who are instrumental in translating the website into different languages, uh, helping us reach more people all over the world and making educational content about Ethereum available to everyone. Um, which leads me to my next and final point, just uh, sharing this link to the certificate in the chat. Um, so my next point, um, a lot of the content on ethereum.org is there thanks to the amazing Ethereum community. Whether that is the actual content on the website, uh, translations or designs, or the community aspect on our Discord, all of you make the website what it is. 
and to further empower our contributors and get everyone more involved with the translation process, we will be creating a new language lead role in the translation program. Um, these language leads will be awarded special roles and permissions, both on Crowdin and on Discord, and will be able to play a more active role in the translation program if they want. Uh, right now, this is mostly still in the planning phase, and we will be sharing more details soon. But we are excited to be able to offer our translators the opportunity to level up and help us shape the future of translations on ethereum.org. So stay tuned. Um, that is it for now. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Joshua. Great, thanks Luca. Great to see this getting pushed forward. Um, following that, we've got Sam, the Ethereum.org team lead, who's going to be chatting a little bit about our plans for what we're going to work on in Q2. Uh, Sam, the floor is yours. Hey guys, can you hear me all right? Yeah, loud and clear. Sweet. Thank you all for being here. Um, awesome. Yeah, short but sweet update on my end. Um, the roadmap for Q2 is is live. Uh, I just shared a link to the GitHub issue. Um, I guess quick recap on this is yeah, like you know we have a whole bunch of contributors on Ethereum.org, right? Like everyone on this call helps helps make all this stuff possible. Um, but we are fortunate enough to have like a core team of now ten of us who are you know lucky enough to to work on this and work on ethereum full time or at least part time um so what we do our best to do is just you know try to gather input from the community try to use a mix of you know quantitative and qualitative insights in terms of like what we should focus on what we should improve how can we make onboarding onto Ethereum easier? What education can we build out that makes Ethereum more approachable and understandable and empowers all the people in the community who discover Ethereum and want to get involved, a place, a place to do that. Um, so what we try to do is just share on a quarterly basis what our team's product roadmap is. And I'd say the goal is at least twofold. One, just to, you know, make things more transparent, make ourselves more accountable. Um, but I think mainly just get folks like you all involved for the people who do want to participate and contribute. Um, we want to just give you the ability to either give input, um, get involved directly, whether that's you know writing code, designing um, images or web pages, actually writing copy, um, or translating content. Um, so I won't give an overview of each of our initiatives, um, but everything that was just pre presented on on this call up till now is is something that's either on or was on our on our product roadmap. So I think a good sampling of the various stuff we're working on. Um, and if you are interested, yeah, I encourage you check out that issue. If something excites you. Um, you know, comment on GitHub, hop in our Discord, let us know. And what we really want to do is, yeah, get more folks involved um, and get that done. So like was said before, yeah, just a big thank you to everyone who's contributed so far. You know, we as the core team often get to take a lot of the credit, but it's really the hundreds of, you know, code and content and design contributors and thousands of translators that, that make all this stuff possible. So... Glad to be here, and uh, yeah, thanks again. Thank you, Sam. Uh, and I'll just echo what you said. Thanks to everyone involved, including contributors, people on this call, people giving feedback. It's it's great to have you all a part of the process. Um, last up, we've got some like miscellaneous items, announcements, callouts. Uh, I think Paul very briefly wanted to speak about the topical office hours that he's just started running. Um, Paul, do you want to chat on that? Sure. Paul here. Um, thanks for joining, everyone. And real quick, I will echo some of the previous comments as well. Thanks to everyone who's shown up. Thanks to everyone who's contributed. Um, 
yeah, it makes our job easy when the community rises up like they've done. So thank you to everyone who's contributed. Um, what I've tried to do recently or last Friday, I, I kicked off a test round of an office hours uh, related to a specific topic. I chose staking at the time, given it was somewhat timely with some of the other things going on. We had just released the staking pages and the uh, quadratic funding round just kicked off. Uh, so I had focused on that. Thank you to anyone who did show up. Hopefully you had a nice time. Hopefully you learned something. Um, looking forward to doing something like this again. I'm happy to accept feedback from people on the, uh, anyone who was there on the last one. But the goal with this is to try to create a more just a friendly environment where people can hop in, and not feel like they're under any pressure, um, and have a chance to ask questions uh, either on voice or in a chat and have it answered and be able to give some follow-up questions. Uh, so I look forward to doing some more of these in the future. Uh, a couple other topics in mind for sure. Uh, but I would love to hear some feedback from people. If there's any topics you'd like us to cover, we can take a look at it and try to spin up a little office hour session. We may not know all the answers all the time, but similar to the East Staker community, trying to be kind of welcoming first and knowledgeable second. So please come in, get your questions answered. Um, we'll be putting out announcements as those roll out. Thank you, Paul. Um, and on a similar note, I think Nuno had something around the sort of design office hours slash design crowd hours that he wanted to talk about too. Hey, everyone. Hello. Nice to see you all. Uh, Nuno here, the design team. So at the same note that uh, Paul did office hours, I think we want to start the same kind of office hours for design. We're calling design critique. On the same note is that we have we are having uh, we are trying to build uh, a design focused uh, community as well so to help out on every other de details of the website uh, and for that i think we, we can start uh, chatting a little bit about design and what we're doing on the design team as well so i will invite you all next week to join uh, on a, um, on a call to talk a little bit what we have in mind uh, to contribute and to work with so uh, I hope uh, everyone can follow designer, non-designers, uh, enthusiasts. Uh, so uh, we are inviting you for next week. At the same note, I uh, will be sharing a Figma file uh, to be pinned on the channel. Uh, I will link to, to the same file on the comments as well, uh, just to be sure that we are on the same page on everything we are working on on design, on, on the design front. It's easier like this to follow uh, the work we've been doing and we are doing right now, uh, but uh, feel free to comment or to uh, give ideas to improve the process. So see you all next week. Thank you so much. Jeff. Okay, thank you, Nuno. Yeah, I'm really excited about getting this started. Um, I just wanted to touch very briefly also on DevConnect. Um, obviously, it was great. I had a wonderful time. It was really good to see so many contributors there, and I think I speak for everyone on the team. Who was at DevConnect when saying that? Um, just getting to meet you in person, getting to chat to you outside of this, you know, Discord metaverse that we all coexist within. Um, and I also wanted to shell our community events page. So just um, for the future, if there are any events that you see on this list that I've posted in the channel. I would definitely encourage you to, to attend if you can. Um, I spoke to a lot of people who it was their first event and um, just how great they thought it was, how much more they felt as part of the community. So if it's something that you're able to, definitely show up to the next one if you can. don't know if anyone in the team wants to add anything at all to that before we go to questions. I mean, just to echo uh, Joshua, um, it was amazing meeting up with so many of our contributors. Um, some of that we set up and planned for. Some of them we ran into randomly just on at different events. Um, always nice to put a name, uh, to put a face to uh, the name and a Discord profile picture or whatever and actually interact with people in real life. So yeah, big plus one on that. I'll just plus one that as well. For anyone that's out there who's looking to try to get more involved, I um, mean, these, these conferences, different events in real life can really be a good way to do that if you haven't gone out there and done that yet. Yes, a lot of what we do is online. A lot of people work remote, but there's still a fundamental human component to all this. And I would encourage anyone looking to get more involved to try to pursue one of these. 
even if you can't get tickets to the event, even if it's just showing up and attending side events, or looking for ways to potentially volunteer to get the cost covered, there's different ways you can end up getting into the mix and meeting a lot of people and, and uh, learning a lot in the space by, by going to these events. So I just encourage everyone to consider it. Awesome. Um, yeah, so next up we've got a, a Slido. If someone on the team could do me a favor and share it in the chat, that'd be great. I'm going to share my screen. So we've already had quite a few questions in advance, but if you've got a question, feel free to ask and we'll try and get to as many as we can. Uh, and just echoing my earlier point, that obviously this is the Ethereum.org community call and not to do with the pro call itself. So top question, when merge? Not really yeah. something that we can answer. Um, so I guess the answer is probably soon. When ready. When ready, exactly. <laughs> Um, Anonymous has asked the question, hey guys, nice work on the site. What is your top priority as we approach the merge? Um, Paul, do you want to talk to this yeah, at all? Not been. Um, certainly related to the merge, uh, we recently put up, uh, we've got kind of two parallel epics in place where we're going to try to make some updates to the page regarding the merge and how, uh, on both ethereum.org as well as the staking launchpad, both with slightly different objectives, but overall, the goal with uh, before the merge is going to be to get the information out that, that relates to any potential changes that are coming. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to squat some myths, uh, trying to provide some clarity around the merge and also uh, make sure that stakers and node operators mm -hmm. are properly informed as well as DAP developers and that regular users are informed and reassured. Um, this is something that given the loose time horizon at the moment is not the utmost priority like this sprint, but it is certainly on our plan for this quarter. It's going to be something coming up where we'll get those updates out. Yeah, and we've also got this um, GitHub issue that I've just posted again in the chat um, around the merge prep epic just like everything that we're thinking about as we approach the merge different things that we need to change whether that's content adding things creating new pages or just making updates um so yeah if you want to get involved in this at all if you can think of any way to help then feel free to check this out and, and comment on that yeah just posted the other one as well like i said there's two kind of going in parallel both the ethereum.org side as well as the staking launchpad feel free to take a look at both okay. um, I just wanted to touch on that first question of merge win. Not that we can provide an answer, but if you're looking for more information, I would suggest going to the all core devs calls. They, um, and that's where you're going to find information on updates on the merge. So if you're looking for some of those answers or at least some like information on it, we definitely recommend checking those out. They're also hosted on the Ethereum Foundation YouTube channel if you can't make them live. Yeah, and note that anything outside of that channel essentially is mostly speculation. So be careful out there. Um, next up, we've got Louis. I think so that's how you pronounce it with a bit of a hardball philosophical question. Um, what is the hardest problem you face as a team? I think we've got our, our team lead who can maybe speak for all of us on this a little bit. And anyone else, if they want to chime in, I'm going to sidestep that one personally. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Um, interesting question. Yeah, I think uh, a few different things come to mind. I mean, I think one obvious challenge is like, you know, with Ethereum.org, at the end of the day, it's just a website. Whereas Ethereum itself is so many different things. You know, it's a protocol, it's a network. It's also just a community of people. It's an open source movement. It's in itself philosophical and cultural and political. It's many different things. And it's something that it's, it's extremely hard to define and capture. And it's, try, it's, it's a hard attempt to try to capture everything about Ethereum. So for me, and I know for the rest of the team, that's definitely one big challenge. I think what helps is, right, like, we're not topical experts in every area of Ethereum, you know, ranging from 
staking to layer twos to some of the softer questions and just various projects in the space, all the use cases, all the DAOs, all the different communities and infrastructure and tooling. But what does help is just, you know, open source for the win, right? And that like, you know, the philosophy that Paul mentioned and Unvetica mentioned of like welcoming first, knowledgeable second, I think is just a great guiding principle because we want to help answer questions that people have in the Ethereum space. And like, oftentimes we won't have the answer, but we're able to find the answer. And like, one of the things I love most about the Ethereum community is just how open and accessible all these different projects and teams are. Like, you guys are here in our ethereum.org discord, but there's hundreds, if not thousands of discords all across the Ethereum ecosystem ranging from some of those areas I mentioned. And often it's pretty easy to get in touch with the developers or builders or like inventors of these projects and ask questions that you can't find in the documentation or online or on Twitter. So the content is a challenge, you know, things are moving fast. It's hard to keep everything up to date, keep things translated, but it really is just a community effort, which makes that a lot easier to manage. Thank you, Sam. Um, I'm guessing no one else in the team wants to speak to that, um, but I think you've done a great job answering it. Uh, next up, we've got Johnny has a question. Um, hey, as touched on to Luca the other day, I think we should create a section slash channel in our Discord where the main scams are highlighted. Um, we've been chatting about this today and yesterday, actually. Um, for context, I'm sure many of you are aware, but there are a bunch of scammers in this space. And as we try and get rid of them, it's a bit like playing whack-a-mole. Don't want to talk um, too openly about what we're doing because that might tip certain people off and waste the sidestep security precautions that we're trying to put in place. But happy to chat offline with you more on that specific aspect. Um, but yes, we've got plans to action something similar to this. Um, since sadly, many still fall for it too often. Yeah. Um, and I'd say that like the best thing we can try and do is education. Um, someone from the team could maybe share our security page that we have on the site, uh, where we basically just go through like general internet security hygiene and wallet security. Um, it's a good thing for anyone getting into the space to read because no matter how experienced you are, you'll probably be a target for scammers at some point. So just making sure that you know all the different tips and tricks that they use and also just like general good security hygiene practices. Um, so if you know anyone who's new to the space, please share this with them before scammers get a chance to actually act on that. Um, we've got a question for Eve Staker. I'd say because we're pretty short on time, maybe direct that to the, um, the Eve Staker folks on Discord. There's a few links in the channel earlier. Um, where is the new wallet page? Corwin, no, no. Where is it? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> To talk a bit to it. So um, if you look at the roadmap for this quarter, um, we're currently committed to working on revamping the Find Wallets page. So I guess some context around that. We get about 5.5% of our uh, website traffic to the Find Wallet page. Um, and we're aware that the experience could be improved when it comes to searching for wallets and finding like wallets for your use case. So we're working this month um on updating the find wallets page specifically um this won't include an update to like the wallets page in the sense of like the information side of what wallets are this is just going to be about finding a wallet for ethereum um i know we have plans to kind of expand information for the wallet section in general to go into depth on like the different kinds of wallets but as it stands right now we're just working on the find wallets page um, and we're going to hopefully have an update for you guys come next uh, sure. community call. Just to add really quickly, uh, in the terms of open the, the process, uh, we are open the design process as well. So I'll give you the link to the Figma file that is work in progress just to see where we are 
at the, the design of the of the page feel free to comment uh, on whatever it is it's sometimes it's a messy page because it's where i work directly so uh feel free to jump in whenever you want and comment uh, on, on on the things that we are working on but if you want to follow along the process uh, feel free to see the, the figma file and follow the, the issue on github Thanks, guys. Um, and I guess that kind of asks, answers this question. What wallet do you really recommend for Ethereum? Is it MetaMask? Um, depends entirely what you're doing, but that page will hopefully answer those questions for you. Um, we've got a question from Claire who says, Hi, guys. Feedback form was circulated by email for people who attended DevConnect. When will this feedback be shared? Um, it's not something that we're dealing with directly, but I can follow up on that for you and, and maybe get you an answer after the call. Um, how can how can you earn Ethereum related po apps other than translating the page? Um, so at the moment we've got translation po apps for anyone translating Ethereum.org. We also have po apps for anyone who contributes in any way through whether that's design, whether that's content, or whether that is code. Um, probably the easiest way just now is by getting some sort of pull request merged on the Ethereum.org repo on GitHub. Um, but we also are planning on giving out pull-ups for a couple of other things related to like the user feedback widget that Jakob spoke about and just a whole other bunch that hopefully we'll be releasing um, probably not this quarter, but into next quarter. Um, and yes, Sam shared a link in the chat for a little bit more context. Yeah, loosely speaking, though, I know within our community, we've got a couple of different ways you can get Poe apps, but the best way to get Poe apps in the whole Ethereum space is to just do a bunch of stuff. Go to different community calls, join in, you know, if you're a coder, get some some code PRs up and potentially get stuff merged if you can translate. Any way that you can help out um, and provide value, that's what I would focus on and the PO apps will come. Yeah. Um, and while you're talking, Paul, there's a question on staking. Can someone briefly summarize the steps in order to stake? Um, cool. Maybe just share a link to the staking page, I would guess. Yeah, briefly describing all the steps to stake is going to be a little tricky in the next three minutes, to be honest. <laughs> you can drop a yeah. link to staking um, if you are brand new. Loosely speaking, if you have less than 32 ETH, you are going to be reliant on pooling options. Uh, so that's where I would head first. Uh, and they, there's a variety of them that come with different risk profiles. If you have over 32 ETH, uh, I would definitely stop over to the ETH Staker Discord and say hello. Plenty of folks over there as well who can help get you started. Um, but overall, testnet first is going to be the answer for solo staking. Uh, if you have less than 32 ETH, though, take a look at the pools. Yeah, um, for just a bit of time, just quickly. Um, will there be some events in Spain this year for Ethereum? Um, I think there are maybe already a one Barcelona. or two arranged. Yeah, Barcelona's the 6th to the 8th of July. I think there's another one. Um, yeah, again, if someone could drop a link to the events page that we've got you can have a look on that and, and hopefully find something that suits um and there was one more that i'd seen that i wanted to answer yeah i'm new to ethereum how do i get involved um again we've got a community section on the website the community hub and within that's the get involved page and it basically tries to break users into different archetypes and personas so that anyone can get involved whether you're a developer designer technical or non-technical and um, so again we'll, we'll share that in the chat and you can maybe have a look through that and see if you can find a way that best suits your particular skill set and um, with that i think that's probably all we have time for um, again just want to say a big thank you to everyone involved uh, and a, a massive thank you to Inveca from eastaker for jumping on to talk about the eastaker skill rent once again be sure to check that out um, and that's pretty much us. Uh, until next time, thanks very much, everyone.